Why is the camera so close? Okay. <laughs> well, this is much closer than I thought it would be to me. Hello. Let's let's move this a little bit. Oh my god. I haven't filmed a video in a very long time. Can you tell? Can you tell? Hey y'all, my name's Mare. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is very exciting because we're going to be talking about books that I loved in 2022. So this is going to be my favorites video, favorite reads of 2022. Um, but I will be honest with you, a lot of these books, not a lot, but like a few are less memorable to me because I just had kind of a meh reading year like it was all right to me i have one book that i'm really excited to talk about with y'all but besides that everything was just kind of like mediocre so i decided to compile a list of every single five star read that i had in 2022 and share those with y'all because i feel like I was just kind of slumpy all of 2022 like I did read more than my original goal my goal was 60 books I ended up reading 75 but compared to the last few years that's not a lot of books for me which was not discouraging because I think quality over quantity every time is the way to go but I just didn't have a great reading year everything was just kind of mediocre so that's why I decided to go with all my five star reads instead of like my favorites because if this was a favorite video I would only be talking about one or two books so without further ado let's get into my five star reads of 2022. So the very first book that I'm going to be talking about with y'all is one that I was very surprised to see I gave five stars to so automatically kind of a chaotic start and I'm not like surprised I gave this five stars because I had a ton of fun reading it it's just kind of like I don't remember anything about this book. I had to like look at the synopsis and really think about it to remember literally anything at all. And that is Ruined by Amy Tintera. So this is a YA fantasy. It's actually a trilogy and I did read all three books in the beginning of the year. So my memory is very hazy. It's been a long time since I've read this and I honestly feel like reading this trilogy was a fever dream because I was just so into it and I have no idea why. <laughs> so this one follows a woman named Emelina and I believe she kills a princess and takes her identity and infiltrates this court. She is one of the ruined, but she actually doesn't have any magical ability like her people usually do. But because her people have magical abilities, they're outcast, they're shunned, they are hunted down because of this. The problem is while she is portraying this princess, she meets Prince Casimir, who is the princess betrothed. And she ends up, you know, realizing maybe he doesn't actually suck and her plans kind of take a change. So Emelina's main desire in this series is to find her sister. Her sister was taken by Casimir's people and she wants to find her and rescue her and free her. There was a lot of adjectives to literally say the same thing. I'm so sorry. I liked this book a lot. Like again, fever dream, absolutely destroyed this book when I read it. I think I immediately purchased books two and three as soon as I was like halfway through because I was like, oh no, I'm gonna need this on hand. What I really liked about this first book was just how YA it felt. There's some YA fantasy series out there that I feel like are just overlooked because they're filled with tropes or stuff and it's like people think that they've read it before and like honestly you probably have read a book like this before but the thing I love about YA fantasy is just how fun and tropey it is and so that's what really called to me about this book and why I felt the need to give it five stars. I will say the other two books in the series I didn't like as much because Emelina's sister comes into play in the sequel and she's just kind of a lot she's a lot as a character she's very overwhelming and very villainish and rightfully so but it just felt very cartoony to me so it didn't have the same like tone as the first book did it just made it feel more like outlandish the second book on this list i was actually kind of surprised made it to this video because i remember loving this book but i wouldn't necessarily say it's a favorite and that is none shall sleep this is a psychological young adult thriller set in 1982 about two teenagers recruited by the fbi to help solve the crimes of a serial killer by talking to another serial 
serial killer. I loved this book and I really don't know how to explain it to you because I walked into this and I was like this is YA like I had no idea until after I finished the book and was like seeing the tags I was like there's no way like this one just felt so crazy like I cannot believe it was a young adult title it was just so like adrenaline rushing edge of your seat like that sort of thriller so our main character in this book is emma and emma is recruited to talk to another serial killer and he takes a special interest in her which you know that's not something you want you don't want a serial killer to have a special interest in you and mind you he's behind bars but he's a very very smart person otherwise he wouldn't have been able to commit so many crimes and get away with them it was just such like a tension building thing because you're like so worried about Emma and what Simon the serial killer might do to her might say to her it was a lot it was a lot don't remember too much about it except how it made me feel in the moment like it consumed me it was one of those books I started and finished within like the same day my third five star read that i want to talk about is a far wilder magic by allison sapped and no one should be surprised if you've seen any of my other videos that this is on the list this is like a very enthusiastic five stars but it was one that we knew was going to be five stars from the beginning right because allison sapped's first book down comes the night was i think my favorite book of 2020 if that's when it came out it was one of my favorites the year that it came out i just loved this atmospheric gothic tone that allison saft was able to build and just immerse the reader in and a far wilder magic was absolutely no different i mean it was obviously a completely different setting but just the vibe of this book immaculate i loved loved her writing style it definitely translated well into her sequel you could just see that she's getting better and better at her craft what i particularly loved about this book was that it had a lot of underlying thematic messages that were super important to read about and to gain perspective on but it was never over the top like in your face this is what you should believe or this is what you need to get from this book so i loved the romantic tension i loved the writing everything about this was just phenomenal we knew it would be i think i still prefer down comes the night over far wilder magic but this is one that i love and if you want a good ya fantasy standalone look no further miss saft is the queen of them so far wilder magic follows a young woman named margaret who is the daughter of a very prestigious alchemist and her mother she might be a prestigious alchemist but she is not a very prestigious mother she is very absent and she actually goes on trips for work a lot and she doesn't give margaret any attention and she is at home one day and she gets a knock on the door and she meets this guy weston who has come to seek an apprenticeship with margaret's mother he's failed out of all of his other apprenticeships and so he's desperate at this point he just really wants to become an alchemist and this is his last hope margaret's mother's not there so what can you do right but margaret sees a hala which is the last mystical creature that is in existence and she knows because she saw this creature there's going to be this hunt that begins it's called the half moon hunt and she knows that she needs an alchemist to join her in order to defeat her competitors so she recruits weston in hopes of the hunt bringing her mother home because this creature is very important to her mother's studies as well as to have weston be in her mother's favor when she returns love the dynamics of this one two unlikely heroes coming together and it was just a lot of really great romantic tension and world building and just like i loved it i love this book so much 10 out of 10. it's time for a coffee break Another surprising choice, I feel like, on this list. I don't know what I did when I was getting out five stars. I think it was just based off vibes. <laughs> um, but a book that I really enjoyed enough to give five stars to this year was You Deserve Each Other by Sarah Hogel. This is a enemies to lovers romance between two fiancés. So they've been together for a while, but the fiancé, Naomi, she's not feeling her boo anymore, okay? She is sick and tired of how polite he is to her. There's no spark, no romance. When she finds out that her fiancé, Nicholas, too, has also been having feelings of discontentment, they go out and start an emotional war they are no longer not having fun with each other they're enjoying each other's company because of all these like pranks and jokes that they're having with each other while 
talking out and open about their feelings of not wanting to be together so it's kind of like is this wedding gonna happen is this wedding not gonna happen do we even still like each other who really knows um but this book was really really fun i really cared about naomi and nicholas getting together by the end which is very odd because i'm not a second chance romance girly like you get one chance and you're done you mess up you're gone but for some reason this one like really worked with me and i think it was just because you could see how badly nicholas wanted to be with naomi even if she was having a lot of feelings of doubt like she and him still made it work and the guy pining for the girl like that's always just a moment i can't really give you more profound thoughts on this book except it was a good time and i really liked it and it was a good romance and those are sometimes hard to find speaking of good romances being hard to find a duo that i thought i would never see write an absolute banger of a book christina lauren one of my favorite books of the year is a christina lauren book who would have thought not me and that is the soulmate equation so right off the bat a reason that i really enjoyed this book was just the interesting premise i feel like with contemporary romance there's a lot of the same plot lines and tropes recycled over and over again which is totally fine i love it I love it, I read it all. <laughs> I'm a big contemporary romance girly. But what really drew me to the soulmate equation was just how unique the premise was because the main character actually had to submit some of her DNA to an app. And that app would tell her how compatible she was with these suitors based on DNA. And she ends up getting either like a diamond or a platinum match with the creator of the app. Like there is no match to ever exist as strong as theirs. You know, it creates some problems. <laughs> um, but what I really just liked about this book was all the friendship dynamics. I loved the romance. It was super healthy, super fun, super fresh. It was all just so good. And I really can't believe that because I thought after reading this book, I'd be done with Christina Lauren, but now I am doomed to <laughs> an eternal existence where I have to keep trying to read Christina Lauren books that I don't like just so that I can find something that makes me feel as much as the soulmate equation did. So it's, it's a fun paradox for sure. Next on this list is Love List and Fancy Ships. And this is one that definitely took me by surprise as well, just because I'd never read from this author. I hadn't heard a lot of people talking about this book. I just decided to give it a chance because I'm a boat girly and I loved it. Like it was so fun. So this one follows Jo and she works on a yacht as a stewardess and something very tragic has happened to her family recently. Her nephew actually passed in a bicycle accident and every summer her nephew and her nieces would come and visit her but obviously things are a little bit different this summer now that her nephew is no longer with them. She's not planning on her nieces coming down, but her sister makes a mistake and thought she communicated with her that her nieces were actually still coming and all of a sudden they're at her doorstep, which throws a wrench in her plans because she has a 30 things to do before she turns 30 list, one of which is a Europe trip. So she has to cancel her Europe trip and ends up spending her whole summer with her nieces, but she's still able to work on her list and she has to check off one item which is to kiss a hot guy at a bar and there she meets Alex who ends up being the new chef on her yacht but this book was actually not fun nor fresh because it made me cry like a baby this book was an emotional whirlwind there was so much like emotional trauma that these characters face that I felt like I was facing because of how real and authentic these characters translated from paper to my mind like these characters were so tangible and it just made me an emotional mess if you like more women's fictiony romance like you like your romance to have a lot of layers to it and emotional depth you're definitely gonna want to check out loveless and fancy ships speaking of romances with emotional depth <laughs> We've made it to my final book on this list and my favorite book of 2022, Part of Your World. I know I said this about like every book on this list, but it was just like a fever dream. I just remember being so emotionally distraught throughout this entire book because I wanted these two characters to be together so badly and I couldn't for the life of me like put this book down. I loved this book. It had all the emotional drama, don't you worry, like, girl, it was crying. And it just had these two characters, Alexis and Daniel, who really wanted to make it work but couldn't. And, like, that's just devastating to me. Like, when you love someone, you want nothing but to be with them. And the fact that they both wanted that but they couldn't do it 
was devastating. <laughs> this book follows Alexis and Daniel who are from very different worlds as the book suggests. Alexis comes from a family of very prestigious doctors and she has a reputation to uphold and Daniel lives in this small town where he is actually the mayor. So they just have two very different lifestyles, two very different expectations from their family and this book is basically about them trying to figure out how they can be a part of each other's lives while not giving up anything on their own. So this to me felt like such a good conflict to have in a book. I loved that there was real reason for these characters to care about each other but there wasn't any of that miscommunication where they you know lied to them or did something silly and just didn't tell them. Genuinely you could tell how badly these two characters liked each other and how it was hard because they really couldn't mesh their lives together because of how different they were. Just, I just love this book. This one is for sure one of my favorites of all time now. Probably my favorite romance that I've ever read and I just cannot recommend it enough. So if you're gonna read any book off this list and you are a romance reader, definitely read Part of Your World. I really don't think you could go wrong with any of these titles as long as you are a reader of the genre. I think all these books were fantastic. I gave them five stars for a reason. Let me know what your favorite books of 2022 were in the comments below. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching. I want to apologize for the lack of content lately. I know I said I was gonna do Vlogmas and I really did have the intention of finishing up Vlogmas. I did two weeks of it, and what you guys actually didn't see is that I did vlog for the third week. I felt like I was vlogging just for the sake of putting out content, and that's not what I wanna do. It was good to get back into the habit of it, but I also don't wanna put anything out that I'm not proud of. And so I was just reading, I was having fun, and I wasn't feeling the pressure to constantly record everything. So I think ultimately, that's more healthy and that's what i need to focus on for my content for my channel that being said i know i was a vlogmas failure but i am going to try to post more to this channel i say that every time i come back from the dead and i'm like hey guys i'm gonna post more and i apologize for how i haven't been posting i'm not gonna give you like an estimate of how often i'm gonna be posting what kind of content to expect but I love talking to you guys. I love posting YouTube videos. I love watching YouTube videos and it's a part of my life that I don't want to lose. So it's something I definitely need to prioritize more. The next thing that you can hopefully expect from me if I haven't already posted it, I probably haven't because I haven't even started this book, will be a Chain of Thorns reading vlog. That's me holding myself accountable. You're gonna see a vlog very, very soon. All that to say thank you. Thank you for watching this video. <laughs> This is very long-winded. Tell me your favorite book of 2020. 2022. Oh my god. Tell me your favorite book of 2022. Goodbye, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all of that, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, y'all.